Well, it's moving day for Epstein. Or should I say it's moving night for Epstein. It's a nice cool night, 73 degrees, it's about 9 p.m. And there were still quite a few bees on the outside of Epstein. That's my swarm trap. Called him Epstein because it didn't hang itself. And uh, so I've smoked the bees and gotten the vast majority of them to move inside of the swarm box. And so I'm going to have to, there'll be a few that are just going to have to ride along in the back of the truck <laughs> on the outside. Um, but Corey's going to come over here and help me because I think Epstein may be pretty heavy. And uh, I think I'm going to see if Corey will don the bee suit and climb up. Uh, if I could have got them all to go back in the hive, I could have slipped up there with the red light on because they wouldn't be alarmed by that. And... Um, the white light would draw an attack even at night. And uh, I could have slipped up there and closed the door and tightened it down and been fine. And then Corey could have climbed up without the bee suit and handed Epstein down to me. But uh, all the best laid plans of mice and men. So Corey's on his way over here. And next step is to get up there and close the entrance and take the box down. Corey ended up putting the suit on because he's stronger than I am and I didn't know how heavy Epstein was going to be. So we got most of the bees back in the box. He's about to suffocate from the smoke. Well, if you saw the episode where we cleaned out the uh, infested hive, the LSU hive took out all the infested frames and whatnot, thinking that the uh, colony had abscond absconded after the queen died. <clears throat> you saw me leave the, the hive body turned upside down like this with the intention of coming back and dragging it up to the house, making, you know, cleaning it up or whatever. <clears throat> I was gone a week, folks. Came back. Can you tell what that is in there? I've got refugees. So it wasn't just robber bees. It was the remnants of the colony that don't know what to do with themselves. And they have been hanging there for over a week now. So, in consultation with my friend Randy at 628 Dirt Rooster Bees, I'm going to put a shoe box underneath them. <clears throat> I'm going to spray them with, uh, I'm going to mist them with some cold water, causing them to ball up rather than fly. And I'm going to get them in that shoe box and uh, make sure they can't get out. And I'm going to take them with me to Epstein's temporary move location and introduce them there. Made it to my friend's house, about eight or ten miles from the from our house. I don't know about how as the flow cry, as the crow flies, but road mileage. And so we're gonna set up Epstein and dump the refugee bees in front. And see what happens.
Well, all in all, a successful evening, if a, if not a late evening. I think I got, I climbed in bed about 12.30 a.m., quarter to one. <laughs> I, I feel terrible this morning. Uh, but Epstein is uh, at his temporary location. Uh, I realized this morning I forgot to close the gate to the catch pen, and so I had a panic attack thinking, man, uh, Chris's cow's going to get in there and think, boy, that looks like something I could rub up against. But I called him this morning or texted him this morning. He said it was fine. He slipped out there and closed it, and it was undisturbed. So, uh, anywho, I'll be, um, you know, we'll leave Epstein over there for, several days at least 48 hours uh if not a week and in the meantime i'll be able to bring the lsu hive up here i'm gonna cut about a foot off the legs because so many commenters tell me i need to <laughs> i'm not gonna cut it way down low because i i like it but i like it being up high higher so you don't have to bend over uh, but i agree with the commenters it is a little bit too high so i'm gonna cut about a foot off the legs and uh you know, I may check on Epstein between now and then, just see how things are going, and uh, stay tuned. Thanks for watching.